Coming up on Al Sports, will he or won't he? An update on the latest injury for Bernard Pierce. Al Sports begins right now. Welcome into a fresh to death edition of Al Sports. Alongside Joe Polinski, I'm Dan Koob. Coming up, we'll hear from head coach Al Golden about Bernard Pierce's availability, and Eric Pelini will stop by to tell us about the newest signee to the NFL's Oakland Raiders. Plus, the softball team paid their final respects to their former outfielder, but first things first. With a 3 0 start for the first time since 1979, the Owls faced a much tougher task as they traveled to Happy Valley to play Joe Paterno and the Penn State Nittany Lions. The Owls were looking to knock off their in state rivals for the first time since 1941. In case you're wondering, 1941, Joe Paterno was just 14 years old. That's also exactly 28 years before Al Golden was even born. And the last time they came into State College with a better record temple, that is, than the Penn State Nittany Lions, it was 1979. Apocalypse Now was lighting up the silver screen, and gas cost 86 cents, but you get the idea. Evan Royster fumbles the ball away deep inside Penn State's territory, giving Temple the ball on the 28-yard line. Matt Brown rips off 18 yards here to the Penn State 5, giving the Owls first and goal and a chance to silence Happy Valley. Bernard Pierce finding space on the outside of the Knicks defense, plunges in from 5 yards, Temple 7, Penn State 3. Penn State would respond with a 13-play drive covering 60 yards and chewing up 6 minutes of the clock before the Owls' defense would stiffen, allowing a 32-yard field goal here from Colin Wagner, who was really automatic for Penn State in this one. But Temple, resilient throughout, drives it deep into PSC territory, and Pierce finishes it off, picking the same side of the field to do his damage. Personally, I think he just likes our cameraman, Pat Rosenbaum. Owls up 13-6. Second quarter now, freshman quarterback Robert Bolden hits Justin Brown for 33 yards to move Penn State in position to close the gap going into half. After another stand by Temple's defense, Wagner boots another one through and go to half with Temple leading with Temple leading Penn State 13-9, Joseph. Thank you, Dan. I'll take it from here. Second half got started with the Owls receiving a huge setback as Pierce went down on the first drive of the half with an ankle injury. He was carted off the field a short time later. The Heisman hopeful did not return to the game. This opened the door to a school record fifth field goal by the Nittany Lions to put the home team up 15 to 13. To add more insurance, Penn State rushes up the middle and barely sneaks in for the one yard touchdown strike, giving the home team a 22-13 lead. Last chance for Temple now. Chester Stewart drops back, but is picked off by the Nittany Lions as the Owls once promising first half Stark comes to a screeching halt in their first loss of the season, your final 22-13. Up next for the Owls, a trip to Army, and they might be playing without Pierce. Bernard continues to work through his ankle injury. Now number 30 will travel with the team to West Point, but will he play? We may not know until just before kickoff. Uh, MRIs and everything have come back, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's basically, uh, you know, uh, one of those... Uh, sprains or high ankle sprains or whatever they call it and it's going to be uh, uh you know when he's able to run he'll he's able to play i'm hopeful and so game time decision means that uh there's a good chance he's going to be you know with us in the travel party and hopefully sometime during the week here get out there and, and do some things and we'll see what he can do it's no secret the Owls offense tends to struggle when number 30 is out of the lineup and yes in case you're wondering that really is his skeleton after coming out of the Penn State game in the third quarter, Temple gained only 29 yards in the fourth and were held scoreless in the second half. All in all, Pierce has been forced from action in five games and missed one complete game against Ohio University last season, a contest that ultimately decided the Mac East champion. When Pierce carries the ball ten times or less in the game, the Owls are two and four. In games where he shoulders the load with more than ten carries, the Owls are 12 and one. Their only loss to UCLA in the Eagle Bank Bowl where Pierce left early due to, survey says, a bum shoulder. Well, Joe, as you know, backs like Pierce who are physical and like to inflict punishment on would-be ball carriers tend to have their bodies break down at some point, as I'm sure you're well aware as a former Norristown Eagle star. Yes, well, it definitely takes a big toll on the body, but hopefully Pierce can fully recover in time for a late-season run. But until then, 
It's all about the bug, Matt Brown. Now, despite the loss, much can be said for the Owl defense. The Owls held the Nittany Lions to five field goals, which was a school record, and one touchdown. The defensive core is one of the main reasons the Owls are 3-1. and one. Updates Josh Waltenberg has more. Up to this point, the Owls are playing better defense than in recent years. They've given up fewer total points and allowed just under 16 per game. Al Golden feels the defense has set the tone for the good start to the season. I think we're a tough team. I think we're mentally tough. Uh, I think we're mentally and physically tougher team than we have been. Um, obviously, I think we're more talented than we have been. There are three senior leaders on all three levels of the defense. Elisha Joseph of the defensive line, Amara Kamara in the linebacking core, and Jaquan Jarrett in the secondary. A fumble on the play. Temple recovers the fumble. These guys have helped the Cherry and White compile five sacks and three interceptions in just four games. Golden says the team's defensive poise will help to minimize their opponent's points. When you're a tough team and you're a, a disciplined team, you find a way to, to hang in there and get tough in the red zone. In the history of the Temple-Penn State rivalry, the Owls have held the Nittany Lions to one touchdown or less five times. Call it a bend, but don't break performance. But as the saying goes, almost doesn't count. They're a great explosive offense, so to hold them to one touchdown, it was pretty good, but it wasn't good enough to help us win the game. We need to work more. Um, just even anybody scoring us, that's not acceptable. Reporting for Al Sports, I'm Josh Rotenberg. This year's season ticket sales for Temple football is up 40%. But the spike in attendance isn't only seen at home, but also on the road in places like Happy Valley. So we at Owl Sports decided to unleash our own number one fan. Here's updates Rudy Mezzi, who made the three-hour trip to Beaver Stadium to take the pulse of this budding rivalry. A student versus teacher matchup at Beaver Stadium brought together Joe Paterno and Al Golden for the fifth straight year. But it also brought out 104,840 loyal fans. And if you looked hard enough, there were quite a few very loyal Temple fans among the blue and white. It didn't matter how long it took to get to State College. Uh, 40 minutes. About two and a half hours from here. Uh, it took us about three and a half hours. Three and a half hours. Four hours. Four hours. Four hours. Four about four hours. hours. Six hours. Yeah, long time. And as soon as they got there, they made themselves at home. We really walked around the stadium, met Temple kids, and ran this campus last night. Like, there's no, there's no like loyalty to this campus. It seems yeah. like. And these fans were very fond of the idea that you can't spell upset without PSU. Yeah, we're here for the upset today. I'm still leaning more Temple. I mean, this is the year. If, if Temple ever wants to beat Penn State, I think this is the year. I think they have a good shot, good team. Penn State's not, not what they usually are, so we'll see what happens. It should be a good game. Bernard Pierce, that's it. He's going to rip it off. Temple's the real deal this year. So you think they're going to win? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And with Cherry and White ready to fight, the Owls scored 13 points in the first quarter, but were shut out the rest of the game, losing 22 to 13. But this game left a lot to be proud of. Whether you're a Penn State fan or a Temple fan, everyone was represented well. And I think we can all say we're right now living in a happy valley. For Owl Sports, I'm Rudy Mezzi.